Hello and welcome to part three of the DIY MAME Seamless Arcade Machine project. And uh, what we'll do today is we'll take the inner LCD monitor that I've mounted in here and uh, we'll bring it forward to um, make up the difference for the convex shape of the old CRT that was in there. We'll also uh, wire up the controllers and get our computer in the back and um, assign our buttons install um, HORM Hibernate Once Resume Mini and uh, wrap this project up and do some testing so uh, let's get into the next part which will be um, I think I'll wire up the uh, control deck let's take a peek okay so we have our control panel open what I'll do now is show you the procedure on uh, wiring up player one. Now I was going to use those uh, Super Nintendo style USB controllers and mod them and just wire them to the uh, control points here, but I decided to buy this little gadget. This is a um, two player USB controller for uh, for gaming and basically you have the controller and they also give you the set of cables required to um, attach all of your buttons to this will be much easier than uh, modifying some game controllers to go in here you know it's gonna save a couple bucks but um this controller ended up being only about uh, twenty two dollars and it's going to be able to handle all my button requirements here and that is pretty awesome so uh, yeah let's get into um, some boring wiring and uh, we'll just talk through it sweet okay I know I know you might not be able to see this very well but I have this ground cable here it basically has one connector connector here and it's daisy chained to all of the uh, terminal connection points on, on one cable. The reason for that is um, all the buttons use a common ground and then they run off their own I guess you could call it the positive post to um, let the controller know that the button is being pressed so basically I'm just going to connect this to all of the grounds on player one. So I'm going to start with the, um, the last one in line, the one that ends, that ends it all. That way we'll have wire slack at this end for our USB controller. I'm basically just putting it on the back pin of all these buttons and they've given you just the right amount of wire to wrap around because you don't want anything getting caught in between the uh, the joystick controller getting a little wire mess that would not be good so I'm just going to uh, finish wiring up the player one button And that's that. I have some left over here. What I'll do is I'll uh, I'll connect the wire for the right. This connector here is the coin mechanism, and I'll get that probably just cut off and then um, crimped into that connector. And that's pretty much it. I'll finish wiring this up and uh, we'll test it after. Okay, so there's the USB controller all wired up. Um, it's a little bit of a spaghetti mess in there, but I'll clean that up some and get them tied. Then I'm just going to use some Velcro to mount it on the back right here. And then I have my wires that will collapse when I close it. 
So I'll move on to that next. Okay, so here it is all wired up. Um, it's a little messy, but I don't mind. I added this blue tape here, so the um, Velcro on the bottom there, it doesn't cover the whole PCB board. So I just outlined it with some blue electrical tape so it would not short out on the metal panel. Decided to put it here instead of uh, instead of back here, just because it would um, the adhesive on the Velcro is going to stick better to the metal than it would on the wood. Okay, now I have to raise the monitor closer to the front bezel so it doesn't look like it's sunk in too far. I'm just going to remove this. Undo some screws and put some blocks of wood behind there and bring this forward and then um, clean up the uh, front and get it back together. Okay, I just wanted to show you this real quick. This is the top where our bezel cover rests on this lip here. So I just need a piece of wood that is about that deep. That's about this deep to put underneath of this piece of wood. So when we lift this up, we'll be pretty much flush to the top of here. And that's uh, about where we want to be. Okay, so I got my pieces of uh, 2x4 that will give me just about the right height to bring up the screen close to the bezel. So I'm going to get the, this raised up and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, now we can clean up the screen and the bezel covers and get this all taped out and sealed off. Okay, I'm not sure when you lost me there, but I'm just adding black tape to the edge of my LCD screen to cover the silver framing so that when we put the um, art work over top of this, we won't see the silver coming through. We're just giving it a black mask. And I have one more side to do. I just want the edge tacked down. Just the edge. Because I don't want to press the tape in too hard. Because I don't want to show all of the metal framing shape under the tape, keeping the impression out of it. And put this in. Over. Now that looks a lot better. Okay, so here's what we have. We're uh, pretty much done at this point, other than having horn installed. So I'm just going to give it a play test. I've set up the um, controllers with MAME like I did in the previous video by assigning buttons. And um, I'll run Hyperspin and show you the interface. Okay, so here is the monitor brought forward and taped out properly. Now um, I did set up XP Horm Unfortunately, I didn't record it, but um, if you guys want to see that, let me know 
and I will make a video on installing XP Horm. But I'm just going to turn this on and show you how it um, boots up from a cold start. Okay, I just wanted to show you my modified power supply. Well, it's um, really a surge protector power strip. This, and I've added these ends. We have power for the lights, which is just basically soldered in on the PCB that's in here to the regular outlet configuration. So when we turn this on, the lights get powered. And I've replaced this single pole switch with the adapter for the cabinet switch that um, runs through this wire and ends up being at the um, top of the cabinet. So when we flick the switch on the cabinet, it turns on our, our power strip, which in turn will turn on our monitor and um, our computer. And that will be our single switch to turn everything on and off. And then we'll just plug the power strip into the wall. I've made this knot here to put in at the bottom of the cabinet so if it gets pulled it, it, it won't yank on the power strip itself. So I'm just going to plug this all in and we're going to give it a test. Okay, time for a tour. Now we have our main power supply and what this goes to is our power strip that is now connected to the, the lights for the marquee and I've put the harness on um, the lights and the power switch from the old power supply I soldered them into this unit here and um, yeah the power switch just goes up the side of the cabinet and up in there which resides here and when we flick this it turns on our computer and our monitor and also our lights which run up here so I'll show it to you when it's off so there it is and I'll uh, go around back hit our main power switch We have our marquee lights. We have our system loading. The only thing I haven't set up yet is um, the lights on the coin door. But um, here is our system fully loaded. I mean, we can. Use the controller here to select games. Push the one player button and it'll load up breakthrough because that's what we selected. I will cheat. I don't have a quarter on me. So I'm going to hit the lever here. our coins, start, and it looks pretty damn good. I'm super happy with it, I'm glad the marquee works, and uh, when we want to quit out, we push both the one and two player button at the same time, and it brings us back to the hyperspin menu. And from here we can pick in whatever game we want to play. So let's go and try out um, something fun here. Uh, Dream World. We'll try that. And here's
here's Dream World. Some pretty nice graphics. So what I'll show you now is I'm going to hit the switch from over here. And this is going to kill everything. And I'll turn it back on. Our system will load again. And this is the completed seamless MAME arcade machine. No use for uh, a keyboard and a mouse. It's not needed. Um, we can turn this thing on and off as many times as we want and it will always start at the bad dudes hyperspin menu. And that's that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this three-part series. I know they've been kind of lengthy and I've left out a couple things here and there, but if you have questions I would be happy to answer them. And uh, as always, you know, give me a thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my channel for more um, groovy little projects like this. Um, and until next time, we will see you later.